to uh Ooh. Got uh got good evening that. and welcome to Covered in Film, a movie retrospective show where we also discuss things. Uh tonight we'll be talking about three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Uh for three billboards, we're gonna have ten questions, ten questions that you're gonna want answered when you watch this movie. So make sure you stay tuned for the 10th. It is the most important question. Uh, but first, sticking with our standard format, tonight's guest will be Russell Craigie. Russell, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Oh, I'm doing just fantastic, Ben. Um, Lightning quick as always. Uh, so just a quick <laughs> synopsis for this movie. Fuck the police. Uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, uh, Russ, before we get into the questions, go ahead and rate and grade. This is your first time watching this movie, correct? Yeah, this was my first time. And I'd never right. heard of it before this. Okay. And You're welcome. Francis, Mc Francis McDormand, you know, I th thought that she was going to stop after Nomadland, but I'm glad she didn't. Because I think this Nomad movie Land was... happened after this. Pretty sure. Did it? Well, you can find it out did. later when you're not Whatever. talking actively. I just checked. But A minus? Wow. Yeah. Great movie. Great movie. Not what I was I mean, I didn't know what to expect going into this. I actually thought it was gonna be like a Darjeeling Limited or something because the movie was so the title was so weird. The um, fuck's like that Wes supposed Anderson. to mean? Darjeeling Limited is a great movie. You well, I thought bitch. it was going to have a Wes Anderson style to it, and it definitely no, did not, not at all. Not at no. all. This was very dark and kind of more up my alley. Even the ending is the type of ending I always feel like. If they had ended this and actually given you a real ending one that you wanted and hoped for, I probably would have given it a B plus mm -hmm. like those, those gritty messed up endings where you're like, Oh, those are the ones where it's like, all right, you get an extra little grade there. Yeah. Yeah. I got to admit, uh, this is my second time watching it. So from my first time where really enjoyed it. Uh, and yeah, that, that ending, I thought I was like, this is satisfying. Even though it's it's almost like a little cliffhanger, almost, but it's really satisfying this this the story arc that this movie gives you. Specifically, I'll talk about it multiple times because I put it in my notes multiple times. But I feel like this is possibly Sam Rockwell's best uh, acting in a movie ever. His character in this has the biggest arc. Uh, just phenomenal acting all around story is fantastic. Some of it drags just a little bit. The biggest detractor for me, the soundtrack, uh, I got to admit, I feel like the soundtrack really missed the mark in a lot of places. Uh, not, a, not a fan of most of the country. And then they play, uh, what was the version? Hang on one second. I got a note in here. Uh, the night they drove old Dixie down. Uh, I mean, you can't put the band in there that they do the best version of that song. Uh, anyway, anyway, I digress. I would say this is a solid B. Uh, it's, it should be an A, but that soundtrack really messes with me. And there's a, a couple other minor things. However, question one, uh, in watching this movie, do you feel like you can even attempt to put yourself into this situation? Can you see where she's coming from with what has happened to her? How, do you feel like she's justified or does she go too far? Um, I think she's justified. Like, I don't know if she's if justified is the right word, but I totally get it and do not 
disagree necessarily. I might do things differently. I might yeah, not well, as well. But back to the original part of my three part first question. Do you think can you put yourself in this situation and kind of think what what would I do at this point? Yeah. Yeah, I would actually it goes two ways for me, and I think it would go two ways for just about anyone. One of them, which I feel is the way that I, I would go because I'm just that guy who's always like, no, logically, we need to move on from this. And she would want us to try and live our lives to our fullest and blah, blah, blah. And you still make the most of every day and do something good with it. But I could also see myself just being like, bucket i lost my kid like what do i care about anything else i'm just going to destroy until i get this figured out right yeah you're gonna try and fill up this hole in me uh that will never fill um and really starting out i, I feel like you really you can sympathize with her. You get what's going on as, as the story unfolds, but really there's a, a huge turning point. Uh, I don't know if it's right in the middle of the movie, but it's pretty close where she has the flashback to the last time they got in the argument and she stormed out. And I, I think that that's a major, like you can think you're sympathizing with her character a little bit, even though there's many things that she does that, maybe doesn't make her a, a sympathetic character, but you want to connect. You want to see her get her pain worked out. But then you have that flashback and you're like, oh, this would likely consume somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I... <laughs> I had a thought. It was a really dark thought, and I don't want to say it on this show. But okay. um, the fact Maybe that it'll come out, keep on drinking. The fact that they left it at, you know, I maybe I'll get raped, and maybe you will, or like, or I hope you do, or something right. like I that. I hope you do. Um, yeah, I would hate myself. Yeah. Think about the things you say in anger and uh, think twice. Uh, like I said, my second watch through for this, I really paid a lot of attention to the cinematography. Uh, that that shot of the billboards in the fog in the morning, uh, knowing what's going to happen for the rest of the movie, I, I really found that shot to be a really great establishing piece for my second watch through. Uh, just really love the cinematography in this movie. There's the, the scene where her son slams the door and it does the whip pan to her. And it's, she looks like she's almost struck by the door slamming like beautiful flow. Great cinematography in this. Uh, what did you think of her son? You know, it's the only thing that should have kept her on a straight path, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like staying good for the one she's got left. Yeah. Um, you know, he was charming. I, I guess I liked him. I thought he was kind of a odd duck. And mm. like, I'm not sure if I felt like he belonged in the movie. But he did help bring this, bring it down to like a more palpable palpable right grounded it grounded it a little bit yeah it, I, I thought he was yeah. an interesting choice uh i i really i recognized him from uh, honey boy i don't know if you've seen that but that's the semi-autobiographical uh shia labeouf movie uh he plays shia labeouf in it my uh, yeah, yeah i've seen all good. of shia labeouf stuff because he's my favorite actor yeah did you see honey boy of course, if it had Shia LaBeouf in it. Okay. Or... All right. Uh, no, I'm making that up. Oh my God, you got me! Wow. Woo. Wait, was that uh, the one where he was two. trying to help the special needs kid? 
No, that's no. the Peanut Butter Falcon. No, Shia LaBeouf. Right. No, Shia LaBeouf does play his dad, right? Yeah. No, Honey Boy is. It, it's good. It's a drama. Anyway, question number two. Moving right along. Uh, she comes home from Peter Dinklage flirting with her at the bar, which is really funny, uh, and finds the priest. Now, the priest is coming at her all wrong, but I think I already know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you think you would ever, let's, again, putting yourself in her shoes, do you think you would turn to the clergy at all? Do you think you would try and find answers with a higher power? Uh, when you said you think you know the answer, what did you think? You probably know. There's no fucking way, dude. Yeah, you're <laughs> not not especially spiritual, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, I hate to say that on a show that my family could watch because, hey, praise the Lord, guys, but not for me. Not for me. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, no, her, her speech right there, the culpable, uh, you're culpable with the rest of your gang. When she gives that speech, I was like, Oh God damn. She is, she hates everybody and, uh, makes me like her just a little bit more. Uh, question number three, rapid fire. Who's got the funniest eyes you've ever seen? Do you ever, ever meet somebody that you would write a report and say a uh, woman with funny eyes? I can, I once again will have to plead the fifth because this person is current in my life. Okay. Somebody's got funny eyes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, yeah, I'll, next weekend I'll be looking around. I'll be like pointing <laughs> to people just randomly be like, I, uh, <laughs> All right, that was just a fun question. What what were you, some of your uh, favorite scenes, favorite little bits? As, as you said, two I guess two things that you already said. Right away, I was watching this movie. Sonia goes outside. You see the billboards. When the third billboard hits, I was like, "Oh shit!" Sonia's going to be asking me. Wait, what? The whole time we're watching this movie. And this is going to be a movie that she's going to want to watch. And so right. I rewound it and she comes back in. And she did watch it. She really thought it was a great movie. And um, I Glad think that hear. billboard scene, I I liked what it did. I like, you know, a lot of times you, you watch a movie these days and they wait quite a while to really tell you what the plot is. This movie did it right away and without being too heavy well. handed right yeah without being too heavy handed it, it unfolds pretty organically yeah i was like what the hell three billboards outside ebbing like this movie's gonna be so weird and then raped while dying comes up yeah. and you're like oh <laughs> right uh, yeah this is gonna yeah. be interesting it's gonna be some serious um, shit I mean, Woody Harrelson was great when when he says I'm dying and she's like, I know. Everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> the look in his great... face when he's like, you still put him up? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I love that. Oh, that's such a great beat. Yeah, he's really, he's pretty great in this, I, I felt. He's not really pushing it over the top again. I feel like Sam Rockwell, every scene he's in, he just, at first, he's so stupid. And it's like, oh, my God, who is this character? And then as time goes on, it's like just the sheer chops it takes to act. But, yeah, Harrelson was great. Uh, yeah, I, I liked his um, Woody Harrelson, um, his kind of relationship with his wife quite a bit mm -hmm. uh like i would hope that if i was diagnosed with cancer that that's the relationship i would go out on with with my wife maybe not end it as early as he did but you know they're still enjoying each other's company um he still messes with her a little bit it's not all just mm -hmm. 
boohoo, gloomy. T- he takes her on dates, spends time with the kids, blah, blah. I really liked yeah. Peter Dinklage when he said, uh, <laughs> I didn't have to hold your ladder. Yeah. Like I thought, <laughs> yeah. It was such a simple, <laughs> simple thing. And it really meant yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I um, Dinklage does great in this. He really throws some heat while he's on the screen. Not too many scenes, but really great. Um, but to your point, Sam Rockwell, when he's maybe not just when he's on screen, but like his arc in this, his it's one of the most complex characters I think I've ever seen in a movie. Right. And and you know, in two hours or whatever to go from one thing to another thing, to another thing, to another thing and actually nail every little part of the progression and basically yeah. be something that somebody hates right off the right. bat. And then to right. go to somebody that you're kind of rooting for and then end up being the hero. Like how do you, how do you take a racist? Like mm-hmm. basically a racist with, a mental disability who's gotten away with beating people of color as a cop, like the ultimate thing to hate and then turn them into this person who you have a bleeding heart for. And then you also are like, Oh my God, he's going to do it. And then by the very end of this movie, you're like, hell yeah, let's go be renegades and yeah. It's fucking Batman and Robin. And he's Batman. Yeah. 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 I really, uh, the, and he he didn't deviate from his original character so much that it was unbelievable, you know, like he still had trouble with complex sentences and that kind of thing. Yeah. But that the letter from Willoughby really is a turning point when, when he even, I I feel like he even remembers that he wanted to be a detective after Willoughby brings it up to where he actually is like, Oh, I can, I can pay attention. I can be a force for good. I don't need to just be this shit kicking idiot. Uh, When he, when he goes in, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to like compound that more when he, when red um, gives him the orange juice, it's like another Uh bit of like hope for, you can do this, man. Yep. Yep. Very big of red. I thought this would be a opportune time to really damage this burn victim who threw you out of a window on the second story. Like red could have yeah. seriously harmed this guy and instead takes it in, gives him the orange juice. And it's just like, yeah, now, now he's worse off like instant karma almost. Uh, really love the interrogation room scene for him. I, I kept writing, like he kept having all these great moments. You really see what a complete idiot he is when he's arguing with her in the interrogation room uh, before his redemption arc even gets close to starting. And I'm just like, dude, I seen Sam Rockwell and so much like good for him for putting this level of bringing your brain to, you know, yeah. Can't can't speak in complex sentences. Uh, really great. Uh, question number four. What's the closest you've ever been to Missouri? Have you ever been in Missouri? Got it. Can I Google it on a map real quick? Because I've sure. probably been really close to it. Why but not? I don't, I don't think I've been in it. Oh, I, I probably drove through it. Did you? Probably. Yeah. I thought it was a little lower than it is, but I've driven across country and took the completely northern route getting there. But when we came back, it was just like, can we do this in four days? Hmm. And I think I fun. I would have gone through Missouri coming back. Yeah. Is it closer to Colorado or Georgia? Colorado, right? Oh, this is just a, it is closer to, I feel like they're about the same. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. Very different directions. There's a, there's a state between each one of them, Kansas 
is touching it and Tennessee is touching it. And then Georgia's on the other mm-hmm. side of Tennessee. Colorado's on the other side of Kansas. Mm, and Tennessee's a long state that way. They're very horizontal. But so is Kansas. They're about the same. Yeah. Interesting. According to All this right, well, map that looks like crap. Nobody cares, but the uh, that's how close I've been. But you've probably driven through it. Cool. Uh, let's see. Blood cough. That's definitely. Did that startle you at all? <laughs> when Harold no. was talking to her, he, no. I think I've seen a lot of blood coughs. That was the one that was done the most, kind of like quick in a normal moment to where, yeah, to where it was like you almost could have missed it, kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. it's it seems supernatural, but not in a magic way. But um, right. right. I feel like but, that's a, a really clinching moment for, again, there's a whole sliding scale throughout the movie on how much you're on Frances McDormand's side. And her compassionate reaction to him is like, okay, all right. I, I can't, can't really fault this lady for just about anything she's doing, when she, even when though she she's so him, rough. When she calls him baby in that voice, uh-huh. you're like, ah. Uh. Yeah, like she loves him, even though she's doing all this shit for her kid and she's being a strong woman. When she sees him cough up blood and she already knows he's dying, she has this major moment of weakness and she just does what's right for him. And yeah, I feel like that. And when you asked me the question about if I if I could be if she's justified or not, and I I this movie does a good job of inserting moments like that to make you feel like her actions are okay. Where if mm-hmm. the entire movie didn't have anything like that, then it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have felt okay. Like when he turns around and he pays for the next month of her billboards, <laughs> you're like, then, Oh, it's fine. Uh, uh, right. That's fucking hilarious, though, that in his note, it's so that she's got to deal with it after he's already gone. And she's going to get all this shit right. for it. So good, dude. What a, what a smart move. Uh, so John Hawks plays her ex-husband. Um, does that guy, do you see him and think of him in any role? Because I see him and Deadwood. Uh, if you've seen Deadwood, I feel like you know him as Saul from Deadwood. Uh, but does he resonate with you at all, or is it just another dude? When I saw him, I didn't even check, but when I saw him, I thought he looked like someone else in another movie who's kind of a shitbag. And like, was it Winter's Bone? Some, and I, who? <laughs> Winter's Bone? No, I don't think so. But I, yeah, I could, he's, I could look it up. He got a lot of but acclaim for that role, and he's kind of a shitbag. His, it's John Hawks. Um, uh, yeah, I, when I saw him in this movie in particular, he's kind of like, he's actually pretty lean mm-hmm. compared to his normal self, or I guess normal roles. Um. But had that leaner uh, face structure, it reminded me, I can't remember the character's name, but the guy who's got the baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire on The Walking Dead. Negan. Yeah. yeah. And so I I did think he was an instant shitbag who probably beats his wife. And then he grabs her by the neck and you know that it's not his word versus hers. It's he's a piece of shit. Right. Yep. Very likely she's not uh, expanding that truth. Uh, speaking of which, question five, what are you most guilty of? What What gives you the Me? most guilt? Yeah. The most guilt? Like, sure. out of like a memory? I, I don't even expect you to answer it, but if you, yeah, sure. It's definitely, I'm not going to answer the memory, but um, <laughs> maybe a thing that I do. Oh. Um. I've gotten a lot better at it, but I I feel like a lot of times when I when I'm talking to someone, I know what I want to tell them, and they'll talk to me, 
and I pretend to listen and then mm-hmm. I just tell them what I've I had decided 30 seconds ago I was going to tell them and I don't I don't even take into consideration what they're saying. I've gotten right. so much better at that over the years, but I still do it from time to time and it's really yeah. shitty when you're a manager. It's a really common thing uh for all humans. It's a absolute condition that most people have. Yeah, they they form that you form your answer within the first few seconds and you're just waiting to speak again rather than actually actively listening to what the person has said. Yeah. Uh nice. Um two things I felt like when I watched it the first time, it's funny because when I watched it the second time, the the last one I didn't see coming, but when Harrelson kind of sets up that day for himself with his kids doing the fishing, he and his wife are going to go on the blanket and drink Chardonnay. Do you see what it's leading up to when you watch it the first time? Or was that, were you shocked when he uh, goes out to the barn? Um, yeah, I was absolutely shocked. Even... Yeah. I thought that when he said he would do it and that she could lay on the couch still, I thought that was just him saying, I want a moment with my horses because I might not be around that much longer. And Mm -hmm. I love my wife. And yeah, why don't you lay on the couch? Like, I'll do this thing for you. And then he gets out there and God, that sucked. Like, that was really shitty. That and Yeah, that's a... The the way they compose that, it's, uh, yeah. What, what I was saying earlier when I said, like, I, I would hope that I would have that kind of relationship with my life and that scenario and everything. I was feeling that all up until that moment. And then when he kills himself, it's like, I was just hoping I would be like this guy. That makes me feel really bad. But then all the letters are read. Mm-hmm. And you feel a little better about it. And I actually like questioned would I want to do that. <laughs> I think part of me would grasp on for a very long time though, that I could get over it. Like, I don't right. think I'd have a defeatist mentality about it, but if I did, I, I would think I'd want to go out like he did. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. This movie's got a few gut punches. Uh, what Question number six. If you got to construct your perfect Sunday, what would you do? Do you already have an uh, answer prepared? For me? I mean, no, I'd probably just wing it. <laughs> like a perfect Sunday, I guess. Kind of a creature of habit, you know? Um, I, I don't think I would pick things that I don't do a lot, which is like the opposite of what my wife would want. So she would want (laughs) me to fly her to Paris for one day or something something crazy like that. Um, but if I could pack like two or three of the things that I really enjoy into one day without feeling like I did too much in that day, that's what I would want. I think I'd love to hang out with my friends, maybe play some more hammer, definitely barbecue, have all of them there at one time, wake up kind of late or wake up at like a pace that doesn't feel like I, I, I was forcing myself to get up, but just like, eh, I don't want to be in bed anymore. And then mm-hmm. ate an awesome breakfast that hopefully had, fried chicken and waffles and a bloody <laughs> mary oh and then snap. just continued to like drink a little bit all day have my friends around do something cool with my wife yeah that's kind of my perfect lovely. sunday and i kind of do lovely. that from time to time and yeah good for you I, live I in the love... dream yeah i mean i guess it's nice to have such a simple desire right yeah yeah go get a massage too like throw a massage in oh, there that's a good with one. all that heck stuff yeah heck yeah get that massage happy ending uh 
Chikatita by ABBA, one of the, one of the better songs on the soundtrack. Just want to call it out. Uh, let's move past that portion. Yeah, question number seven. All right. At the time, it's deplorable. It's probably his lowest moment in the movie. But do you find yourself watching Sam Rockwell's drunken rampage of righteous retribution and thinking, I'd like to do that one day to somebody who really deserved it? Because Red didn't deserve it. Sam Rockwell was a piece of shit at that moment. But did you find yourself at all thinking, who could I pistol whip and then throw out of a two story window? I mean, hell yeah. Like I've, (laughs) I, people have asked me before if I could bring myself to kill someone in certain kinds of moments and I'd be totally fine with it. Like with a gun. I don't know if I'm necessarily an up close and personal, like slit somebody's throat kind of guy, but if they deserved it or if it's in self-defense or something like it's not going to make me feel bad. And there's definitely, again, maybe not the knife guy. I don't like blood, but our knives. I'd be, I mean, I'll stab someone if I have to, but I'd what if it was a needle? If I have to, I'd, (laughs) I'd be totally fine throwing someone out of building. Like if it's justified, like if they, if I get to sleep well at night, be after knowing what I did was a good thing. Like I could do that. Yeah. I want to do it nice. right now. Nice. Uh, one thing this movie had, and it's funny because after I watched this, I saw a thing advertised to me, I want to say on Instagram or uh, wherever it was, but uh, the, you know, they, they racism, sexism, these are prejudices that, are are really well versed as far as any human being who's been alive for any amount of time. I was really caught off guard by the level of little people shaming portrayed in this. And I, I couldn't help but think like, is that a real thing? Are people just talking shit to little people? Like they're, I, I don't know. What, what were your thoughts on that at all? I mean, I don't think that it's like a common thing for douchebags to to joke about, but I do think that douchebags just if if it's in front of them, they're gonna say shitty things and yeah. he was there. So right. but It'll I do think making racist empowered. comments like yeah, making racist comments, making sexist comments and making homophobic comments are much more commonplace. And so Mm -hmm. idiots at a bar in a place of, I don't know, whatever they're going to make all those comments. And if there's a short person there, they'll probably throw that in there too. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And uh, the, the juxtaposition of Sam Rockwell, the first time you see Dinklage in the bar and then her ex-husband being overtly offensive really is like, oh, look at these, these two guys have a, a parallel there. Really helps take a notch down, really makes her ex-husband look worse and worse. Uh, what uh, Question number eight. What's your favorite date you've ever gone on? These are good questions because I am pausing to think, but I am able to answer them. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite, but I like one that I remember very well is my first like big date with Sonia. Mm -hmm. And at the time I wasn't making a lot of money. And I think I've actually maybe even talked about this on the show, but we went to Hmm. California Academy of Science uh, she also wasn't 21 yet, I'm pretty sure. And I took her to Morimoto. And as I said, I wasn't making a lot of money. So I was trying to you, remember on um, 
Friday, how he reaches and he's like got his date planned out. He's like, how do I make this money last? And he reaches, takes the homeless guy's money and he's like, hot dogs, oh, hot dogs is something I can do right now. That's so half baked. I, I had Friday I, half baked. Yeah. Racist Friday. motherfucker. Friday was the other one. I mean, yeah, Dave Chappelle's not even in Friday. <laughs> no, he is not. Uh, um, where was I going? You called me racist, and I totally lost myself. Anyway, so uh, he he's like, mm. I can make this money stretch if we get hot dogs. And I knew I wanted to take her to uh, Morimoto to try certain food. Um, but I was like, we can't get full there. And so I took her to like cheap places. We ate some food there. Then I took her to Morimoto. So it was like a very creative date. And I, I made probably, it was probably like $250 go a really long ways. And um, got, I think, two appetizers at Morimoto and bought one glass of sparkling wine and then just let her have most of it even though she wasn't 20 and or 21. Mm. And uh, that was the majority of the date that I can remember. It was, it was a Morimoto and, and Academy of Science date, but there was some other stuff thrown in there. Yeah. So as far as like nice. just basic normal dates that weren't going to Italy or something. Right. Have you had a date where you flew to Italy? I don't think it was a date, but we're going there. I don't think that's a date. That's a vacation, but that's cool. My mine would definitely be when I met Kelly. Uh, either that or our second date, possibly the third date. All, all, th all the first three were really, really awesome. It only gets better. Uh, what's that? Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, uh, <laughs> dude. Yeah, fourth date not not the best but they just keep getting better Did she just yell uh, that out yeah yep so you look over oh she reminded me that the fourth date kind of sucked but apparently yeah, she has made it through that she's at roseville kaiser uh she's at the yeah at the hospital anyway uh not a good not question number nine one right before it uh when he's in the bar and he's overhearing the the two dipshits, and he's got a notion that this guy might be the guy. When he does the magic trick, do you did you see that coming? As far as he's getting the guy's DNA, no. It, I thought he was going to punch him. You know, yeah. But and and also, I've seen that in too many movies where they're like, "I'm going to do a magic trick," and the person just sits there. If somebody was antagonizing me and came up and said, I'm going to do a magic trick and put their hand that close to my face. I uh, think I would grab their hand and push them away from me very, very yeah. quickly. Um, so that was probably one of my least favorite things in the movie was when that was happening. But yeah. when he scratched him on the face, I totally thought that, okay, that's weird. I did not see that coming. And then when he got right. back to his house and he put it in the yeah, vial, I was like, his, uh, oh, yeah. holy shit. That Dude, was awesome. that moment, he is just bloodied and beat. And just to see him scrape that, it, so well shot to where you're like, holy shit, this is the hero. Look at this fucking piece of shit is the hero. Yeah. Uh, so good. I don't know. I really love that. I Earlier in the bar, the first bar scene where he is like up on red. I, dude, I'm like, why are you not pushing this guy away from you? Anybody is that close to where their face is right here. I'm like, get the fuck off of me. I, yeah. Uh, well, I Sam think, Rockwell in this uh, close talker. I think red did a really good job in, in multiple scenes of being okay with letting him hit him. And yeah, that I first thought, time where he comes out after him, he's like yeah. waiting for it when Woody Harrelson stops him. And then the, again, do when he comes at him with the pistol, his face is not so confident at that moment. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I was a little disappointed with the punishment, you know, like he just got fired. 
shouldn't he have gone to jail? Yes. Yes. I'm pretty sure uh, that in any, maybe in a podunk town like that, you don't go to jail, but anywhere no near way. us, you go to that, jail. The, yeah. The supposition there is that red would not have pressed charges and there's absolutely no way he he's young. He wants that police station money. Like you're definitely going to sue the police a hundred percent for allowing this guy to continue after all these allegations. Uh, yeah, it kind of fell apart right there, but he does become Batman saving the shit. And then he picks out his Robin, him and Mildred, they're going to go fight crime. Question number nine, if you decided, what? Well, this is the second question number nine, but keep going. I want to do more. No, questions. I said not question number nine before. This is oh, this okay. one. If you decided to fight crime, what kind of crime do you think you'd fight? Corporate crime, street crime, tax evasion. What do you think? No, it would be ones where I, I took out the really bad guys. Well, wait a minute. Like, am I a superhero who doesn't die? No, you're or just am you. I, am I putting myself at risk of dying every time? That's the second one. Yep, the latter. Okay. And then have I gone through some shit where I don't care that I'm going to die? Like, am I on Punisher You're you level? right now. You are you right now. Oh, then I'm totally just taking out tax evasion. <laughs> like, Shoplifters are going to get a stern talking to on my watch. Yeah, I'll, there's this guy on um, YouTube. I don't know why he comes up, on, but I watch his shit. So YouTube knew. YouTube was like, I bet you Russell Craigie will watch this guy. And then mm -hmm. I didn't. They're like, now we're going to keep throwing it at you. But he finds people who don't put their shopping carts away. Mm. Pretty sure that's what it is. Either that or they park wrong or something. And right. he takes a magnetized bumper sticker that says, like, I'm an idiot. Um, Basically, it implies they're an idiot. And then if you need help with being an idiot, call this number. And it's like his number for a fake hotline. Mm. And then he stands near their car as they come out of their store, out of the store. And they get really mad and try and chase him down and fight him. But he's he's real skinny and he's like a track guy and he just has cameras on him and all he does is he antagonizes these people into trying to get mad and looking stupid. And he asks them questions about why they can't do anything right. And they try always try and hurt him. And then he just runs away. I feel, I'd be okay being that guy. <laughs> the noble calling. Noble yeah. calling. I don't, I'm not out there to die unless like if right. somebody murdered my whole family, you'd go yeah. full Punisher. Fuck it. You'd, yeah, you'd like, like call me Frank Castle. I don't care. I'm going until the end finds me. Yeah, I'm gonna kill all of them. I don't want them to go to jail. I'm gonna kill them slowly. It's gonna be John bad. Travolta with a bad haircut. Dude, supposing I could live, you're Thomas Jane. I could I'm live off supposing. of very little too. Like sell the house. I'm good for the rest of my life. Just eat cans of beans and shoot crossbows at bad people on the street. Did you say fat people in the street? What a dick, dude. <laughs> I said God. bad people. I don't know why you got to turn it that direction. Uh, one of the things I really love, this will be, we're almost to question 10. So you let me know if you've got something I didn't bring up. But one of the things I really wanted to bring up is. I just so imagined myself shooting anyone who's overweight walking down the street with a crossbow because of you. And not for the first time today. I bet. <laughs> I would bet even money. Not for the first time today. Uh, so that dude, the the guy that uh, Woody, or not Woody Harrelson, Rockwell gets the DNA from. Same dude that was threatening her in the store, right? But she doesn't know that. When Rockwell proposes and says, look, I, I, whatever this says about me, whatever. But the conversation on the phone where it's, look at this guy's not the guy, 
but I'm guaranteeing you he's a rapist. And maybe you can draw some measure of satisfaction by causing retribution for somebody you don't even know. But I guarantee you some had an experience similar to what your daughter had. And Francis McDormand's is all in. You know what I mean? I'm driving to Idaho in the morning. Uh, when she, supposing, you know, three days later, whatever, how long it takes to get to Idaho, they actually track this guy down. And she sees who it is. How how on is it at that moment? Do you think she is just seeing red or if you put yourself in her shoes and this guy, you got this tip from this idiot who's like, Oh, you saved." And again, when, when she sees that the one thing he's saved from the burning police station is her daughter's file, like she's, she's given Dixon a pass from there on out. But I really love the setup of when they find that guy and she sees that it's the guy who broke the statue and threatened her in the building, in the her shop. Like, he's definitely getting murdered. There's no... Oh, there's no, no question. question at that point. Because they were, they were both like, oh, I guess we'll decide when we get there. Right. On the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, no, there's, there's no rest stop where you're like, well, let's just turn back. Let's not even satisfy this itch. Like there, I feel like there is a sequel to this movie where these two are traveling from state to state and have this database that they've created, and they're they're going she's after still, fucking. She's still got her son murders. though, so she can't just true permanently leave. True, right? They they but do this one. They 18. come back. He looks yeah. about eighteen. He could he could probably do it on his own soon. Hey. Yeah. How many people do you know that you feel like you could call up with something as serious as that question and get the answer you need? Honestly, let me, I, I have to think about it, but I, a minimum of three is going to be my guess. Probably as many as six. Wow, you're you've got a good group of friends. I mean, I I'm thinking about different people, and uh, either by loyalty or my relationship with them, or just the person they are. Uh, I think I've got three to six people who, especially, I mean, it, I don't, I don't even want to say it, but if I'm in her situation there, I definitely have lifelong friends who are going to help revenge my fucking kid. Like, uh, yeah. Make it, oh, well, I was not implying that. Yeah. But I was just implying like a serious, like, Hey, will you help me bury a dead body kind of thing? Right. Right. Cause I was trying to look at it from my point of view. And so mm -hmm. I could not have that call. Um, yeah. If, but if you called me, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure I said it here for everybody. I'm okay with murdering people who deserve it. So Russ knows where the bodies are buried, which is, uh, do, do you got anything else you wanted to bring up uh, about three billboards? And before we get to question number 10 to close it all out. I mean, is your question about Sam Rockwell? No. Because he's so fucking good in this movie. And so good. I just don't Won the think Academy I Award. Did Nick he? Dormand and him won the Academy Award. The movie was nominated, didn't win for Best Picture, but those two won for their acting in this. Best actor and best supporting? Or I guess best actress. And best actress supporting. and best supporting actor, yeah. That's so okay, I a hundred percent. I didn't even look at the rest of who got nominated, but I I doubt that there would be anybody with a better performance. His arc in this movie, every time he's on screen, I'm like he he's just yeah he he's I, nailing it. When I when I watched the movie, I knew you were going to talk about him, but when I watched the movie, um, I asked myself afterwards, 
is this my favorite Rockwell performance? And I think the answer is no. I I think my favorite performance of his is Jojo Rabbit. I really yeah. he he makes <laughs> he's the so movie funny. for me. That's a mm. great movie, and he's he's the reason it's great. Like there's right. there's a lot of great parts, but I think it would be what a great time to be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, um, so funny. it's yeah. definitely not his best acting. This was his best acting, and at, to your point, the arc was incredible and and complex. And like I said, I I have not seen somebody go from that to that i like if you asked me i couldn't even say anyone who has fulfilled that i don't know change that he did in this movie that mm -hmm. well for me as a viewer um ever i may, it's probably out there i just don't know off off the top of my head yeah no i i i agree in, in recent memory the arc of his character, the, the role. Uh, yeah. Uh, amazing. Amazing. Yep. So what's your question 10? Question 10, you know, this movie was pretty heavy. And so afterwards I, I was like, mm, I feel like I need a little palate cleanser. Uh, what's your favorite standalone episode of the office to watch? Um, I, I yeah. actually, I like a lot. So it, I, when you say that my mind goes to like, what's one that I can just watch over and over and over and over and over. And it doesn't matter how many times I've seen it. There's probably like four of them that I could just uh -huh. say right now. There's definitely individual scenes where it's just, like when Toby comes back and he's screaming, that's one yeah. of the best parts in movie history. Right. Uh, like, but the first Dundies, the time uh, Michael Scott gets lost and they have to like do the yeah, what, Holly finds find him. him. Yeah, it's that's so a great episode. It's so weird and heartwarming and funny, and they like find that he's been kicked out of a fucking restaurant or store or whatever. Right. Um, when they go to Robert so California's much. house, uh, that yeah. was pretty great. Everybody right. has a good time and yada yada. Um, maybe the episode where he gets lost actually, that yeah. might be. If That's I were to watch one, one over and over, where Jim and Pam have to stay on Dwight's farm and he's crying in the night. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's so many. He I don't reads know. Reads Harry I... Potter for a bedtime story. My my favorite scene, hands down. I know, and it is when Kevin tells Robert California's wife that he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Let me and... save you some time, honey. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's like. Maybe my favorite thing that's ever been said on television. <laughs> um, but I as a as a whole episode, it is a great episode. Um, I don't know if I would say it's one that I could watch over and over and over and over again. It's not as heartwarming as some of the other ones. I like the ones that have the funny and the heartwarming at the same time. Yeah. And so that's and I kind of go where they find Michael. Like that was a good yeah. A good mix. That's a good one, for and that's a uh, a lot happens in that episode. So it's uh, that's actually pretty good. I like that. Great answer. Great answer, Russ. And a <laughs> great show. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, you know, feel free to come back next time if you like. Uh, my mine is the dinner party. Uh, I don't. I I can watch it over and over again. It's got so much funny ass shit. Uh, you're not going to leave this party here by itself. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. If you made it to question 10, uh, we'll be bringing you more thoughtful insight into movies you should watch. And uh, thanks, Russ. Hey, thanks, Ben. Watch this show, idiots. <laughs> <laughs>